Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to come out here at 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond. Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter. Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. This is a Champions League breakdown for the round of 16 for Tuesday and Wednesday, April 9th and 10th, 2019. Really excited about this slate. A lot of that has to do with the fact that this type of Champions League, or I should say this time of Champions League, we're getting into a situation where a lot of players deserve the top end salaries and they just can't get it because not every player can be priced at the top end. So I'm really excited about this. Let's just jump in right away. First game on the site, we have Porto making the trip from Portugal into England to play Liverpool. We have Manchester City making the quick trip, comparative quick trip, from Manchester into London to play Spurs. We have Juventus making the trip from Italy into uh, Holland to play Ajax and Amsterdam in the final game of the slate. We have Barcelona making the trip from Spain into Manchester to play Manchester United. So, yeah, let's just jump into this right away. First game, Portugal at Liverpool. I should say Porto at Liverpool. Uh, for the most part, this game should be circled around the concept that one, Liverpool are much better at home uh, than they are away. Two, Porto is much worse away than they are at home. And three, can Liverpool score more than two goals? If you believe Porto can keep Liverpool under two goals, then Casillas makes for a viable uh, low, low salary, uh, low floor play this slate. He could even make it to double digits. If he allows two goals, gets six saves, uh, which is both very, very possible if he has a really good game and Liverpool doesn't have a great game, then yes, 3.6K is viable. Uh, is it my favorite vi uh, low-value keeper play this uh, option, this slate? No, not at all. Uh, do I think Liverpool can score more than two goals? Uh, yes, obviously they can, and I think they will. So I'm not necessarily interested at looking at Casillas this slate, but those are ge the general laws around Casillas. Will Liverpool score more than two? No, you can use them as a low-value. Do you think they will? Then you really can't use them, and you have to move on because he's just as likely to score minus uh, in either side than he is to get you uh, any kind of value. Now for defense, Telus is someone that you can consider for cash. He hasn't slowed down in terms of a minimal floor against basically any teams. But the main issue for Porto this slate, uh, as has been most of the, of the Champions League so far, is that they really haven't played anyone uh, in terms of their overall competition. Roma was by far the best team they've played so far this season uh, in terms of Champions League. And it took them overtime in order to finally see them off and that was barely uh and in to compare that porto is by far the worst uh champions league team outside of belgrade probably uh that uh liverpool will face so far this champions league so um I do think Telus makes sense from a standpoint of do you want someone who will score 6 to 10 fantasy points uh, and doesn't cost more than 5k? Yes, Telus is definitely viable for that. Uh, I th He is up there as one of my top cash defenders, but he isn't the person I'm just necessarily building around. And in the case of this slate, when you have someone you're not building around, they may fall through the cracks because you may have to punt in those situations you're not building around when you're dealing with salary like Messi's and others that we'll be speaking of. Uh, so, yes, Telus does make sense, 4.6K, but he isn't my build-around core player. In terms of the midfield, and Nestor, uh, yeah, let's stick with the midfield for this moment. Uh, it's basically a wasteland of DFS options. Are they good real-life players? Yes, absolutely, and they do work as a team. But are they good DFS options? No, absolutely not. A lot of that has to do with the fact that nobody sees 90 minutes, and the ones that do see 90 minutes aren't really viable for 90 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, Herrera is viable for me on FanDuel if you want to use him. I think he, do make, he does make sense even this late against a team like Liverpool. Uh, but I would probably keep that to GPP. Um, now, in terms of DraftKings, it's a definite no for me just because he isn't necessarily DFS transvertible for his skill set. And just like I said, across the board, the guys who deserve to see 90 minutes don't. And the guys who do see 90 minutes, like uh, Pereira, uh, don't really do enough with it. Now, he does... 
uh, Daniel Pereira is someone that you can use as a super value play this slate. If you're looking for someone uh, you can take a little bit of risk on in cash or GPP to finish with at least six fantasy points. Uh, Pereira does fit that mold. The one issue I do have with him is that he can just as easy take some fouls and finish with a minus and absolutely ruin your day. So, uh, yeah, it, it isn't necessarily something you may want to do in cash, but if you're absolutely stuck for 3.6K and you need a solid floor, he does provide that floor, albeit it does come with some risk. So, uh, yeah, if you need to, you can. It definitely isn't what I suggest. Uh, and in terms of forwards, Morag is really the only go-to guy here. Other than that, they don't see 90 minutes. Suarez has been seeing some time. Uh, but again, just the lack of minutes is absolutely appalling on Porto. So, yeah, if you want to use some Morag and GPP, 7.3K is still a pretty huge asking asking uh, price for me. I'm not interested, but uh, it, I wouldn't talk you out of it if you use in GPP because he's going to have no ownership and the amount of uh, counteractive points you'll get to the mass ownership that uh, the other side uh, Liverpool will have uh, will make him a little bit more value so valuable excuse me um 7.3 too much though if you use 5.3 I would definitely consider it but 7.3 is just too much for me uh so yeah jumping over to Liverpool now um as far as I'm concerned, you can either Allison or go super value. There isn't really much uh, linear in between for me. So, yeah, um, I do think Allison makes sense. He has the safest win, safest shot at a clean sheet, and he's probably in the most dominant game in terms of like having just an all-out flat uh, performance. So, uh, he doesn't necessarily have the ceiling that I'm looking for. So, GPP, I'm a little bit shy away, unless your idea is to chase all... Uh, three defensive uh, Liverpool options and try and chase the clean sheet, then absolutely roll with Allison. Outside of that, uh, I wouldn't try him in GPP at all. I'd just strictly keep him to cash uh, and hope he gets three saves, a win, and ideally doesn't concede. Now, in terms of defense... Uh, you can roll with some Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh, he's definitely been putting in quality crosses and been playing uh, very well. So, yeah, I don't, obviously, I, I wouldn't talk you out of not taking Trent Alexander-Arnold, especially on FanDuel. He has some of the most chance creation, uh, creative crosses that uh, 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 on the slate, really. So, yeah, if you're not going the Tellez side, I would definitely spend up a thousand more on Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh, I think he has just a little bit more floor, but maybe not the upside because Telus does take the penalty shots for Porto. Uh, so, yeah, I am expecting a couple penalty shots this slate. Uh, one from this game, I don't want to say for sure, but that's, you know, just what I'm calling. So, for sure, my call is that uh, there'll be a penalty shot in this game. So, it could go to Telus. It could go to Salah. Uh, now, in terms of floor, it'll be interesting to see if Milner starts. If Milner starts, especially with no Trent Alexander-Arnold, then I have absolutely no issue with rolling with some Milner. Uh, ideally in cash. Uh, but I I'd probably shy away from him in this excuse me, this slate as a whole uh, just isn't where I'm looking to spend in that six kind of mid 6K range. So uh, in terms of the midfield, there isn't really too much to go for in Liverpool. And I'm hoping a lot of people will chase Kieda if he gets to start uh, from his weekend performance. And while he is a great player, he isn't always DFS transversible. So yeah, I'll, I'll be looking to stick to the forward. Um, I'll keep Salah to GPP. Honestly, I don't really see him having the kind of floor I'm looking for. Uh, you can get that same kind of floor from Messi, from Kane, from a bunch of different options this late. Ronaldo will all offer much better floor uh, than Salah and the same type of ceiling at the same same, si same time. Excuse me. So, yeah, I don't mind Salah in uh, 8.4K in GPP, but not interested in cash whatsoever. Uh, for cash, I would definitely stick to the... Liverpool defensive. What even isn't the worst idea here is in GPP to go Liverpool defensive and Salah. I think that makes a lot of sense. And you can also use Mane as a one-off. I think that makes sense a lot in GPP as well. It's just a filler in a situation where you need someone uh, to jump in. Uh, I think Mane uh, makes sense as a, a one-off. But outside of that, uh, I'm not super keyed in a around Liverpool outside of uh, maybe getting a clean sheet. It's probably my favorite thing to target from this game. A clean sheet and a penalty shot for GPP. 
that's basically it for me so yeah uh i like uh liverpool to probably win this uh two to three nothing it'll be interesting to see what happens uh basically my prediction here is that liverpool are going to go out and win this hard uh ideally hard meaning not allowing any goals uh, as the way uh, goals do still count if you're unfamiliar with that uh what that means is that uh when the tiebreaker comes to the very end if a team has more away goals than the other team uh that's usually the the, the tiebreaker goes to uh so yeah the the away goals are massive and i don't think uh, I, let me rephrase that. I think Liverpool will be playing to ensure they don't concede an away goal before they play to score a goal. Uh, so you can go with Casillas in this scenario, uh, but I would rather just go with Allison. Much safer. 2 nothing. Liverpool win final. Um, Salah with a goal uh, on a penalty shot and another goal from someone coming on as a sub like Lallana or something like that. So 2 nothing. Liverpool win. Next game on the slate, we have Man City traveling to Tottenham. <clears throat> this is going to be a segment here where I am going to discuss something I will rarely ever discuss and say some things I'm rarely ever going to say, hopefully never have to say them ever again. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I think Spurs are going to win this game. Throw it out there, just tossing that out there. At worst, uh, draw. Um, I really don't see a Manchester City win. I see a lot of Manchester City ownership, especially when people see the Manchester City salaries. Now, this is kind of the issue here with such a small slate that any mistake you make is kind of co compounded because there isn't as many mistakes that are simply going to occur to kind of make your mistake not as bad anymore. So all mistakes are a little bit heavier and, um... Yeah, I'll just lay it out here. Man City has been far worse away from home than they have been at home, especially in Champions League this season. They've looked lost on a regular basis away from home. They've been conceding, barely winning games, not winning games. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's a scenario where you can look at as uh, City very simply just have one one less box checked. And as we go through here, it's just another box that's going to uncheck for City, making them less and less and less viable. While at the same time, they're still going to draw all the ownership that they always draw because they are Man City. So yeah, let's just start off the hop. Uh, start with Ederson at the back. And very simply, with such a high salary, you need him not to concede. And he's been conceding very consistently on the road, in particular in Champions. Champions League and consistently enough in English Premier League now where he isn't as viable of a clean sheet option as he once was. Uh, especially on the road, it, it's just not a place you want to look for 5.5k. Can City win this game? Yeah, they're probably going to win this game, but can they do it on the backs of Ederson making more than three saves for really the first time since uh, a, a Schalke game? Or excuse me, that's not that's a Hoffenheim game. Um, so yeah, it's uh yeah. I don't know. I don't see him scoring more than 15 fantasy points uh, at his absolute best game. And from that kind of absolute best game scenario, you need a ceiling at least 20. Uh, and uh, lots of other keepers can hit a comparative ceiling uh, where Ederson just isn't going to hit it even in his best moment. So yeah, first box unchecked. Uh, Ederson just isn't as viable of an option as he usually is. He's probably going to concede. To second that now, if he's going to concede, that usually means, or that does mean, excuse me, the defenders lose their clean sheet, and it usually means they don't meet as high of a ceiling as they necessarily would, or you could predict otherwise. Uh, so yeah, uh, going down the list, Mendy played uh, against Swansea over the weekend, and I'll be frank, he looked really bad. Uh, is he a good player? Yes, he's a very capable player. He's still very young, and he keeps blowing out his left knee and is forced to second straight season now where he's missed uh, more than half of the season due to a left knee injury. So he's just coming back again. Uh, he was viable last season. Same idea around this time. Uh, getting between 5 and uh, 10 fantasy points is basically his floor. But, um, yeah, uh, 
he isn't healthy at this moment. He still isn't fully fit, so I'm still. Uh, I'll probably wait until City are home at Spurs before I consider kind of using him in any kind of uh, format or build. And Danilo on the other side just isn't as good of a DFS option as he is as a real life player. So I'm just not really that interested in the wing backs. Now to further that, in the case that they play John Stones, okay, this is a big one. This is actually a huge one. This is one of the biggest tells for Man City. Uh, what they do sometimes is uh, they do two things. They play three at the back, uh, which is really bad, and they play worse. Or they play John Stones as a right back or as a defensive midfielder. And anytime they do this, they just are not as good of a team. Uh, so, yeah, if John Stones starts as a right back because Kyle Walker is hurt, red flag, Another couple boxes unchecked because he's not getting a clean sheet. Nobody's getting a clean sheet. They're not going to play as well as people think. They're still going to be massively owned. Uh, and they're not going to play as well because John Stones is the right back. And they never really do. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's tough for me to really suggest that there. Um, now, I should mention, I'm just noticing this now. You'll notice uh, this isn't actually a card that I built. This is literally what I do is uh, my dummy lineup is to go click, 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 as quickly as I can. I fill up a card and I enter the contests I think are most viable in terms of the slate. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of these guys aren't playing, are hurt, are out. So, yeah, I can 100% uh, say that is not a any kind of a lineup uh, in the background there. So if you're looking at that and trying to build that, that isn't any way my lineup. Don't, don't, please don't do that. So yeah, carrying on uh, back to the Man City defenders, uh, nothing really else to talk about. They like to take a lot of fouls. So I'm not necessarily looking for them in either format this late. It's more of a telltale sign. If you notice they start doing certain things like playing John Stones as a right back, it's a red flag, jump on some more spurs, even go a little bit heavier. Now, in terms of the midfield, Raheem Sterling played a full 90 minutes against Swansea on the weekend. So, first thing that says is that either if he starts, he's not going to see 90 minutes. And secondly, if he doesn't start, he's probably coming off the bench for someone, especially if City aren't doing as well. So, another box to uncheck. Sterling probably isn't seeing 90 minutes. Now, to further that, uh, either Sané or Mares are on either wing and should be seeing 90 minutes. One of them. I'm hoping it's Mares and we can get him from 7.5k, which will make him cash viable this late. Absolutely 100%. If Mares does start on the wing and it looks like either Sterling isn't starting or it isn't playing at all, uh, get Mares into your card. 7.5k is... He's a 9.5k player. So yeah, it's just because everyone can't be priced a million bucks. Mara is 7.5k. Don't be afraid to use him this late. Um, now, in terms of everyone else, it's kind of tough. David Silva played 90 minutes. Kevin De Bruyne came off, but he was hurting as was, so it really wouldn't surprise me to not see him start to not play at all this game. Gundogan should be good to go. It wouldn't surprise me to see him actually do something as kind of a random GPP one-off from only 6.1K. I don't hate that idea. He isn't my favorite. Uh, now, the same can be said for someone like Phil Foden. If he happens to get the start, he did see a lot of minutes uh, again against uh, Swansea as well uh, and played really, really well. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, Fernandinho, yeah, I'm not too interested despite he's probably going to play 90 minutes. And up front, so that's a few more boxes unchecked there except for Mares, who's still viable despite minutes concerns with, like, combating with Sterling on that. And then up front, uh, Gabriel Jesus played 90 minutes against Swansea. And Aguero looks like he will be playing, but he's coming back off of a really serious injury, so it really wouldn't surprise me to see Aguero and Jesus split time this game and both not play nine minutes, making them both unviable for either format. So yeah, uh, that's really my Man City take. Uh, I think there's a lot of boxes being unchecked. Are they still Man City? Yes, they can still do great things, and I don't necessarily see them being beaten for nothing or something obscene. It's it's City, but uh, like a a one one draw. I think is totally in the cards here and with that in mind i'm not really interested in chasing a ceiling which a lot of these salaries and ownerships will dictate 
Uh, so yeah, maybe Maris and Cash if you want, uh, but I'd rather look to the other side of the field, honestly, with Spurs. And we can start at the back. Uh, Hugo Lloris, uh, I think he makes sense in GPP this slate. Not a lot of people will be owning him. A lot of people will be expecting City to score and him to concede. And in the case that City does score, it will be done by someone rather unviable, probably a non-90-minute player, which will kind of cut the ceiling over from the top. So yeah, I'm not necessarily interested in Hugo Lloris and Cash. There's too much risk, but there's so many boxes being unchecked by City that he does make sense as a GPP flyer. Now, to further that, you can roll with some carrying trip A in cash if you'd like at 5.3k. And depending on where Danny Rose starts, I also really like him uh, for either format this late. Uh, I'm hoping he starts as a wing midfielder again. Uh, get him into your cards at 5.1k. One of my favorite plays this slate if he does get the start again on the wing. Uh, absolutely uh, stellar. Uh, City shouldn't necessarily stop him from getting a floor and definitely shouldn't stop him from finding a ceiling in a good game at home. Uh, so yeah, I really do like Danny Rose's slate 5.1k. I'm hoping he gets to start uh, over Ben Davies, but in the case that Ben Davies does get the start, uh, you... It's not ideal uh, from uh, a standpoint of skill. I would definitely prefer Danny Rose, but uh, you can roll with uh, a GPP flyer with uh, either Loris chase, chase both wing backs or whichever wing back is uh, higher progressed up the field. Uh, so yeah, going into midfield, I really like Christian Eriksen in this slate, 7.4k. Uh, you can't really go wrong with him from that salary. Uh, he's just too skilled, been playing too well, and at home, City being away. Uh, is he necessarily something I'd like to go with as like my top cash play? No, in GPP, I really like him from the salary. I think 7.4k is just plain and simple. Too cheap for someone of Christian Eriksen's caliber. Now to second that... I really like Deli Ali this slate, 5.6K. Uh, it, it's tough to know exactly how Spurs will line up this slate. They could play any amount of guys in any uh, which order, but if Deli Ali does get the start, uh, I do really like him in GPP saying this slate, 5.6K. It's just far, far, far too cheap for someone of his caliber, even going up against Man City. But again, you kind of have to take off the EPL homer hat here for a minute and remember that Man City have been an absolute disaster this season of Away in Champions League and in general they haven't been that great away as they have been at home so uh, I know Deli Ali is being priced down because it is Man City but we have to remember this is Man City away in the Champions League and they just aren't the same team plain and simple so I do like Deli Ali 5.6k this site but strictly keep that to GPP and then up front you have Harry Kane 8.3k he's still going to see a pretty decent floor he still has the same type of ceiling that he sees every other kind of game um I, I don't have many concerns pairing him with Messi and GPP. He isn't probably my favorite cash forward, but uh, in the case that uh, City have been giving up penalty shots uh, quite handily this Champions League. So, yeah, I have no issue uh, rolling with Harry Kane in either format, honestly. Uh, he isn't my favorite cash forward, but you definitely can use him. But get him in GPP. Ideally, I would like in GPP to stack him and Erickson and Deli Ali, or him and Deli Ali, either of the duo of the three or either take off three together uh but if there's no deli ali i'm not as interested uh, uh son you can get away with but he just simply hasn't been playing very well up until last game so uh if that's something you feel like you can still buy low into yes uh take son into the mix but i'd rather spend down on deli ali for only 5.6k and uh use that instead so yeah um in terms of final score I'm going to say a 1-1, one, one, one nothing Spurs win or a 2-1 Spurs win. I'll, really, I'll be very surprised if it gets to 2-1. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, Spurs definitely have it in them to keep Man City out of a win. Can Man City win? Yes, but it's just not what I'm betting on. Next game on the slate, we have Juventus making the trip into Ajax. And this is another dandy of a game. Really interesting to see how this is going to uh, go down. Well, we'll start with Juventus. And as always, my Chesney Spiel, he isn't a very good goaltender. He happens to just play on like the best defense in the world. So, uh, yeah, not necessarily someone you want to use in DFS because he's just he's a walking plethora of risk 
That's what I would define uh, Chesney as. He's just seconds away from losing uh, Juventus any game ever. So, yeah, I'm not interested in Chesney. Uh, I would rather go with other goalie routes. Now, in terms of the defenders... Juve defenders just aren't as good as other defense wingbacks, whether you're looking at Trippier or uh, Tellez or uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold or uh, Andrew Robertson. Uh, none of them really, uh, or excuse me, all of them are far better than the Juventus wingbacks in terms of DFS, just because they don't necessarily uh, produce in DFS, especially if Cancelo's out. I'm not really that interested in any of the defenders whatsoever. Uh, now, as we get into the midfields, it, it all depends. You'd have to assume that Ronaldo has been saving up for this moment. Now, here's the breakdown for Juventus. Uh, I'll just I'll, I'll go through it in order because not importance of just order. Pianic makes sense in either format this slate because Ronaldo does not. I know I haven't got to Ronaldo yet, but we'll get there in a second. So if you want to use Pianic from 6.6K, I don't mind it in cash. I think you can get away with it just because his floor is good enough outside of Ronaldo. Now, um, Pianic still does things. He still does take free kicks. He still does have roles within the team that does make him DFS viable. So 6.6K is quite simply too cheap for Pianic. Uh, you probably want to get him into some of your cards this slate. In terms of cash, yes. In terms of GPP, he also makes sense as well. But not as much as he makes sense for cash. Uh, now, in terms of the other midfielders, it all depends if Ronaldo plays or not. If Ronaldo's playing, uh, then you kind of have to scratch them all out because either their minutes or their production gets hurt by Ronaldo. Diaba still does take some corners, so uh, it, it wouldn't be the worst thing uh, if he got some minutes. Uh, Bernard Deshi probably won't see as much minutes, so he has been taking some of the corners, so it's tough there. Again, we're unchecking boxes like City it feels, but uh, yeah, um, let's jump to Ronaldo. Basically, he's hurt right now, he's not healthy. And the likelihood that he sees 90 minutes is really, really unlikely. Uh, so, yeah, that's my Ronaldo take. I don't think he's going to be as good this slate as he is normally. A lot of people will still be drawn to him because it is Ronaldo. And even with a goal, he'll need the rest of the slate to crap out in order for him to really find himself. Now, um, 12 fantasy points is still totally in his wheelhouse from 9.5K, though. Uh, I think Harry Kane is more than viable to get 12 fantasy points against City for for less, uh, much less. So, yeah, um, can you play Ronaldo? Obviously, you can pair him with uh, Messi, but it just isn't uh, isn't really what I'm I'm overly after this slate, uh, especially with the builds. Uh, so yeah, I prefer spending up on defense this slate than necessarily going ham on both Messi and Ronaldo at the same time, just because Ronaldo isn't how isn't as healthy. And my final little spiel here on Juventus. Now go back to Chesney to kind of drive it home. Juventus, for the most part, are a team that don't score a lot of goals. In particular, uh, at most, they'll score three goals. Uh, so you can see 2 0, 3 0, 1 0, 2 1, 1 0, 2 1, 2 0, 3 0. That's not blowout material. That's just very simply not massive ceilings. Now, for Ronaldo, it's a little bit of a different story because he can get a floor of 15 to 18 fantasy points, just floor, and score a goal and break the slate. But he's not at full health and not probably not playing 90 minutes. So that floor takes a massive hit, but his ownership and salary does not. So, yeah, can Juventus go out and win this game? Yes, through Juventus. I pegged them to win the Champions League this season. It wouldn't surprise me, though, to play for another kind of 1-1-2-2 draw kind of thing and not necessarily go out to win, wait for getting an away goal, and wait for the home game before they come out and look to necessarily win the game. Uh, so, yeah, uh, jumping over to Ajax... It pains me to say, but yeah, Onana makes for an incredible low salary keeper option this slate. He's going to be low owned. Uh, people are going to be terribly afraid taking someone against Ronaldo. But the fact is, Ajax are absolutely stellar at home. Uh, absolutely 
destructo mode at home against basically until they lost to Real Madrid at home before then going to Real Madrid and winning. Uh, that was like the first loss they had at home uh, since 2015. So Ajax is not a team to sleep on. It's just where to properly play them. I would play Onana and Cash. I would shy away from him in GPP just because the win is pretty heavy ask, but getting 8 to 10 fantasy points is not at all. I don't see Juventus scoring more than three goals for the first time all season, basically. I, that's a hyperbole. I don't know if that's true or not, but definitely for Champions League, uh, it's been a very long time, even I'm thinking into last year, since they've scored more than two, three goals. So as long as Onana makes six to eight fantasy or six to eight saves, uh, you're probably going to be looking at a, a good day. Uh, so, yeah. Um, 4.5 is a little bit heavy. You're probably going to want more than that. Uh, you ideally want Juventus to be kept under two goals, two two goals max, minus four, two saves. You'll want four, six saves at that point. So, yeah, if it can stay under the six, uh, or excuse me, stay under the two goals, then you only really need six saves, which isn't a huge ask considering Juventus rarely, if ever, get over two fantasy or two goals, then your fantasy points should be safe. With Onana, the slate, 4.5K, that's my keeper play, number one keeper play. Um, now, in terms of defenders, Taglifco isn't really where I'm looking Uh they don't really have a lot of defensive options. Uh, in GPP, sure, if you're taking Onana, you can take him too and hope he does something like scores a goal again. Uh, but in terms of a, a floor or a ceiling, it's really unlikely this slate. Uh, five fantasy points is kind of his go-to. So, yeah, I, I, I really wouldn't read too deeply into that kind of thing. It's it's very simply a situation where you can fade the Ajax defenders unless you're ta chasing a, a clean sheet, which isn't really something you want to chase the slate against Juventus. Uh, so, yeah, um, jumping into the midfield, we have the issue, very simple issue of salary. And Ajax has been playing so incredibly well that DraftKings has fairly reacted by just overpricing them across the board because they simply can't take the risk of Ajax keep continuing to do Ajax things. Like consistently, mind you, too. Like, it hasn't stopped. Zayak hasn't stopped. Like uh, the thing I've been saying about him all Champions League is that he's a poor man's Mares. The issue is now he's nine point six k and Mares is seven point five k. So now Mares is the poor man of uh, Zayak. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, not necessarily where I'm looking to go for in cash. Let's just put it that way. Too much salary, too expensive. And GPP absolutely chases for days. Hope Chesney has a really bad game and Ajax continues their home winning trend. Is that a cash script? No. Outside of Onana, just making enough saves and not costing you an arm and a leg, uh, that's where I would end it. Uh, but in terms of... Uh, uh, a cash script, there's not a lot to chase. If Shone was 4.5K or 4.3K, then we could think about taking this kind of floor. Uh, but yeah, it's just like even his minutes have kind of dropped. If he didn't score a goal, he was going to finish in the minus. So yeah, uh, I had him. I know, I can assure you. Uh, my Ajax stack may have made me a lot of money uh, last uh, Champions League slate against Real Madrid, but... That doesn't mean necessarily uh, it, it's worth this kind of salary this late. Uh, and like, yeah, if you are unfamiliar with Ajax, basically, Ajax is a team in Amsterdam who focus mainly around a youth system. They have one of the biggest youth academies in the entire world. A lot of people in my area were scouted to go and play for the Ajax youth team, which is kind of unheard of. I'm in Canada, really, really rural Canada. So Ajax literally touches all corners of the earth with their youth scouts to try and find youth players. And they find the best in the entire world. And they happen to have some of the best youth young players in the entire world right now. Whether it's uh, Matthias De Ligt or De Ligt, uh, he will be uh, City, Liverpool, Barcelona, Real Madrid. You get my idea. He will be on these big teams in the coming years. He'll be a household name. Uh, Daily Blind obviously grew up for this team and went to Manchester United and is now back. Uh, 
Where's uh where's my main man? Frankie De Jong, uh, bought by Barcelona for sixty odd million dollars, completely has schooled everyone. Um, so far this Champions League has looked like the world's best midfielder uh, at only like nineteen or whatever. Uh, David Neres, young kid, Casper Dahlberg, Danish international, just a kid, wonder kid. Uh, Hunter Lear is like forty uh, uh forty something, really old guy, so I wouldn't judge that. But yeah, that's basically Ajax's goal is that they grow these youth players and then sell them for hundreds of millions profit uh down the road so um yeah they're doing great they're playing great but in terms of a future uh they aren't really necessarily something i would buy into long term uh i would rather look at either even porto as being a cinderella story before ix getting past juventus it's just a lot to ask now at home first leg Juventus may just play for a 1-1 draw and be happy with that and go into a home game knowing that they have the away goal and uh, forcing Ajax to win by one. So yeah, I do like uh, Ajax to not necessarily get blown out. 1-1 draw, final score. Uh, you can use Onana in either format. Last game of the slate, we have Barcelona traveling to Manchester United. Um... The long and short of this, how to word this properly. Save all your ownership for the final game. There, I said it. Done. Um, I expect numerous goals, at least four total goals from this game. So, yeah, there shouldn't be a clean sheet. This should be straight out uh, complete bombardment attacking back and forth. So, uh, let's just start at the back. Uh, Ter Sturgeon is both keeper Keepers do present a viable GPP script in the sense that they could get a clean sheet for very low ownership in their GPP script realm. Like, not many people will be playing uh, Ter Sturgeon chasing a clean sheet. Uh, especially when you look at the wing backs and see there isn't really much options there and their center backs don't really put out any kind of a serious floor. So, yeah, I, I, I'd rather just look back past Ter Sturgeon's 5k and assume that he's probably going to concede this slate now into the midfield uh, i'll talk about miss messi as a forward but basically coutinho can be used in gpp i'm not interested in him in cash just because that's purely the messy uh realm but in terms of gpp if you want to use him as a one-off or stack him with messi absolutely get coutinho in there there's absolutely no reason not to now to further that luis suarez is playing some of his best footy at the moment he's only 7.9k he's probably my favorite gpp GPP option of this slate. Manchester United are going to concede. I'll just get that out of the way right now. They're probably going to concede more than once, probably even more than twice. Uh, they've been doing that consistently this season to far worse teams, so there's no reason to assume someone like Leo Messi can't do what he does at his absolute best, which he is at this moment. So, get Leo into your cards this slate. Let's break this down. How to play Lionel Messi. Basically, you could, there's three ways you can play him. Leo and you pair him with another really high salary, crazy high salary like a Ronaldo, and then you literally punt everywhere else. Everywhere else has to be super, super cheap, uh, below uh, 6K. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to afford that at all. Generally speaking, below 5.5K is where you're, you're cut again after that because the general salary, as you'll see here, uh, that's where you're at. Um, the second way to play Messi is you play Messi and you stack Barcelona. Uh, the reason for this is just not in cash. This is GPP, obviously. Uh, but you're hoping that he goes absolutely off for like a 40, 50, and everyone else joins in the fun. Uh, now, the third way to play Messi is just simply by himself. Uh, now, you can do this in either format. The thing is, though, you have to go over the field. You have to try and assume how much you think Messi will be on this slate, which I think will be 40, 40%, 40 and go over that. Uh, so... So yeah, basically I'm looking at playing Messi in at least half my cards this slate, if not more. Uh, you never want to go 100%, but if I was to ever suggest it, it would probably be on Lionel Messi and it would probably be this slate. Uh, just because there isn't as enough uh, kind of high-end ceiling to make him work. Uh, so, uh, to, to make him work much harder to uh, outclass everyone else in the slate. So yeah, I, I Messi is absolute lock for me, either format, get him in as many cards as you possibly can because jumping over to Manchester United, 
is David DeGaia. Now, two ways. Uh, either you can use him in GPP. He has been putting out these 14 save games that have just been absolutely obscene and doing crazy things. But the issue is that he's conceded basically all but two games at home this season. I think it's something like that. So, yeah, um, not necessarily where I'm looking to... Uh, oh, yeah, you see two right there, obviously, right away. Uh, I meant two domestic English Premier League games this season. He's been con conceding very consistently to much worse players and teams than Lionel Messi and Barcelona. So there's no reason to assume he won't concede at least once, if not twice, if not three times, if not maybe even four. Uh, Barcelona are that good. And Manchester United are just kind of in this free fall at the moment. They aren't playing as well. Uh, they're kind of over the honeymoon period with Olga or Solskjaer. Uh, Young will be playing. He got sent off. Uh, he is viable to me in uh, like a cash setting for 5K. It's probably too cheap. I think there's better cash options, so I'm not necessarily looking to play him there. Uh, but in terms of the midfield, again, Pogba will have a ton of ownership. People will see 7.7K. I am concerned that he will pay people off, uh, but I would probably keep that to, again, a GPP setting. Uh, and the same can be said for Rashford in terms of GPP. Game stack this game, get messy, and a bunch of different people hope for a 3-2 final score, which really isn't that far of a question. Uh, or a hope, I guess I should say. So I'm not necessarily that excited about Man United either. You can play some Rashford, but he isn't healthy. So 90 minutes isn't exactly on the boards, uh, which just draws me closer back to even taking some Luis Suarez and Messi in cash together, which I don't actually hate that much. Sorry, there we go. So yeah, that doesn't necessarily leave you a ton of options here in the midfield. You'll have to jump down on someone, find someone to play in the lower ends. Uh, but again, like th this isn't necessarily necessary there. Uh, you can do a bunch of different things here. So yeah, uh, final score, I will say a 3-2 Barcelona win. Barcelona will be very unfortunate to score less than one goal. Uh, very unfortunate, and I'll be very surprised if Manchester United can score more than one goal. But that being said, 3-2 isn't really that far out of the question either. Let's let's be a little bit more respectful and say 2-1 final score. Barcelona wins. So yeah, that is my take this way. Thank you very much for tuning in, uh, everyone. Rotopros.com. Get over. Check us out. Top right-hand corner. Articles. Drop down. Uh, check out all of our free contact. Get involved in our Slack. Uh, Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit me up, uh, preferably on Twitter. But if you hit me up on here, I will try to comment. So thank you so much, everyone. Good luck and hopefully see you at the top. Uh, take care.